countryside was sickingly pretty. The sun setting on a sweet summer day, rain sparkling on grass, birds in the trees, children playing. Ah, the Pink Bird Mental Institute. Mira's men pretended to be hospital wardens. The flesh, the flesh. I think I died. I think I'm dead. I don't know. I don't know. Death is coming. It's coming. They're here. They're here. Get away. Get away. I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> they said I was an escaped mental patient. Diagnosis? Paranoid schizophrenic. You are insane. Psychotic. You have to eat plenty of pills to get better. They lied that I had killed my girlfriend. John Mira came to mock me in the bathroom mirror. <laughs> the flamingo was with him. Mira are more fun than television. Mira claimed my girlfriend had turned evil. Joined him. She has died her hair red. I smashed the mirror. I'd kill them all. Stay tuned as Address Unknown continues. And now, Address Unknown. I hadn't slept in a long time. When I did, my dreams were nightmares. I was trapped in a nightmare. My evil double had taken my girlfriend. In a nightmare, every choice you make is a wrong one. Following him, I had somehow slipped into a twisted alternate reality. Noir York City. I would wake up at night, afraid that day was a dream I'd forget. My double was John Mira. He was the devil incarnate, a fallen angel. The flesh of fallen angels. He was a serial killer. He had framed me for his murders. I was hiding in a cheap motel. One night, I woke to a knock at my door. Someone slipped a note under the door. It was a clue. I descended into a mystery, desperate to catch him, to find my girlfriend, to save her. Welcome back to our return to Center Marathon. Two days and two nights of the 90s cult series, Address Unknown. All the episodes in a row, a real descent to madness. I was lost in the streets of Noir York. The city had swallowed Mira and my girlfriend. I was part of some elaborate game, complex for its own sake. <laughs> Every time I looked over my shoulder, I saw a shadow disappearing behind the corner, the glint of binoculars in a window. They were spying on me, following my every move. When Mira killed again, the map of the city changed. Like a shifting glacier, a new crack appeared with every gunshot. I had abandoned all conventional methods of navigation. I was following the bloody signs he kept leaving me. And he was watching me do it. The next episode of Address Unknown, right after the break in our Return to Sender Marathon. Mona's place was a closed-down funhouse based on a 90s TV show. The show's cancellation had been the kiss of death to it. I felt like I was walking into a trap. I felt guilty, like I was about to get caught.
He's coming after you. He wants to catch you. They're closing in. John, I love you. Don't give up. There had been no lock on the front door. I had wondered why the place wasn't packed with hobos and stray dogs. Little wonder. as a way of sneaking up on you. No, You'll hear no. broken echoes of it everywhere, like a bad replay. You get mad at everybody for reminding you about it, even if it's all in your head. All right now, easy, easy, just hand it over. There's a good boy. Hey, stay back. When entertainment turns to a surreal reflection of your life, you're a lucky man if you can laugh at the joke. Luck and I weren't on speaking terms. Or maybe the place was just too lame to be funny. is a linear sequence of scares. Take it or leave it is the only choice given. It makes you think about free will. Have our choices been made for us because of who we are?